like relaxing. Mm. I'm just like tired. That's good. That's good. Relaxing is good. I'm trying to avoid going to the hospital for as long as possible. They yeah. really wanted me to come in so early. <laughs> I'm Leafy Greens and this is my daughter Clementine. I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you so much to Ashley for having me. Ashley and I have been in contact for almost a year now, I believe. We only recently talked about doing a collaboration and we both were kind of like, oh my god, yeah, this is so obvious. Why didn't we think of this before? And so I am happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Ashley. I'm a mom, I'm a freaking warrior. I like to talk about mental health and surviving trauma. And not only that, but like kicking trauma's ass and deciding that you're gonna have like a badass life despite what has happened to you. And this is my little gremlin, Clementine. <laughs> Do you wanna say hi? <laughs> I love you so much. If you want to check out my channel, please feel free to do so. I'm sure links will all be down in the description. And I'm going to be hosting Ashley on my channel as well, either the same week that this comes out or the next week. So be sure to check that out. We're gonna be talking about what it's like to be a small YouTuber and a mother and to just have all these crazy things going on. And just, um, we're gonna try to show you the reality of YouTuber life. Leaf openly discusses everything. She either makes you laugh or cry. I've always been afraid to fully share everything that's going on with me. Thank you so much, Leaf, for all that you do on your social media platforms. You don't know how much it means to a lot of us. Leaf gave birth a few months ago to her baby Clementine. So there are a few things that I notice about Leaf's birth that are very positive to me and I want to share that with you. First of all, what is a positive birth and what might it entail? To me, it means that in your experience you either felt supported or it felt like you had some level of control of what was going on around you. Your needs in regards to your health and your baby's health were met. I found out that I was pregnant in October? October or November of 2018. We had just gone to Milwaukee to visit a friend and actually record a YouTube video. And on our way home, I was like, dude, I don't feel good. I don't smell good. Like, I think the first thing that stuck out to me that made me realize that like there was something going on was the fact that I really did not smell good. And I was like, there's something going on here. I also hadn't had my period, but that was like pretty normal for me because I um, struggled so much with eating disorders early on and that like took my period away. I was convinced that I couldn't get pregnant, but because I smelled so weird, I decided, okay, maybe I should get a pregnancy test and we should see what's going on here. We were coming back from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we went uh, up through this town, and we went up through this town called Sparta that is outside of La Crosse. I bought a pregnancy test at the Walgreens, took the pregnancy test in a bathroom at a quick trip, and it was positive. And I was like, Oh my God, what am I gonna do? I cried the entire way home. I was not anticipating uh, being pregnant or being a mother that was like not on my agenda at all. I thought that I was just gonna be a dog mom for my entire life because I do have such bad trauma from like earlier on. And so I was like, I'm gonna be a terrible mom. Like this is the most terrifying thing ever. And I was horrified, but for some reason I was like, no, I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm going to have this baby. I did not really feel like I had a ton of options. I felt like I had two. I could not afford a home birth. Home births in my state, which is Minnesota, run about $6,000. And I just don't have anywhere near that money. And I had no way to try to make that money. I'm on state health insurance and I was basically just limited to things that my state health insurance would pay for, which is birth centers and hospitals. And a birth center 
would have been great in theory like I definitely considered that however at the time I was living in a small town out 45 minutes outside of Minneapolis I ultimately opted to go with a closer option the closest option of all was the worst option that was the local hospital and I absolutely would not do that so I found kind of a perfect in-between place which was a further out hospital that had a midwife team of five nurse midwives who like use standard hospital equipment when needed but also were very much about like empowering women to have the experience that they wanted to have so they encouraged me to make a birth plan and and they followed it to the best of their ability i was in labor for 34 hours i went into labor at one o'clock and i had her around like 11 15 night the next day and i actually tried castor oil which i did not intend on doing i thought she was going to be an early baby but as time went on they were like all right well we're gonna we're coming pretty close to needing to to induce you so I was like I'm just gonna induce myself and I did the castor oil with like almond butter and apricot juice two hours later I was in early labor so it worked for me I didn't have any of the like crazy explosive gastrointestinal problems that a lot of people <laughs> report having from that so it's definitely like not something I feel I can recommend freely but I will just say that I personally didn't have any problems with it other than that I still ended up having to get induced <laughs> contractions weren't stopping and they were happening like a minute apart for quite a few hours but I did wait many hours until I actually went into the hospital because I just wasn't ready to go yet I probably waited like um, seven hours to go in we went in around like 7 30 8 o'clock told me that if the contractions didn't stop to come in and so I went in and I did not end up leaving from that point my epidural <laughs> the epidural was like definitely what I needed to have the positive birth experience that I did even though I was so resistant to it at first I have so much trauma and I have so much discomfort around like being in a hospital setting that I was not dilating enough so I stayed at about one centimeter for like 24 hours basically until I said yeah give me the fucking epidural and then once I got the epidural about an hour later I was dilated to eight centimeters and pretty much ready to push although it was immensely different from what I had planned I am so glad that I went that route because it was exactly what I needed. I already like planning on, okay, I'm gonna have this baby in hospital bed. So I did have a birth plan and I had a lot of preferences. One of my main ones was that I didn't want any men involved in my birthing process other than my partner. Ultimately, that turned out to not be possible because I got an epidural in the end and so a man had to be in the room for that but it was fine I didn't want an epidural I didn't want like any drugs I wanted a natural birth I wanted it to be as hands-off as possible um, but yeah I had like a long birth plan thing all written out and they really tried to follow it but ultimately had to kind of deviate from my plan having my supportive partner there having people there who knew what I wanted and could help me advocate for it. Um, walking around definitely helped. Chronicling some of my experience on social media and just like talking about what I was going through helped until I couldn't talk, which does happen at some point during labor. You're just like a wild animal, just like fucking screaming bloody murder. My experience was not traumatic. I had some amazing nurses and when I didn't have an amazing nurse, like when they sent in a nurse who was really shitty and who I didn't vibe with, I told them. Being empowered to say no and to say that I needed something changed was really what made it positive. Like having the courage and strength to speak up and say, hey, I'm not vibing with this nurse. I need a new nurse like it would have been a traumatic experience if I had not said anything if I had just like gone along with an experience that wasn't serving me well like then I could have then I could see it like becoming 
a traumatic experience. I asked for what I needed and I think that was the most important part to having a good experience was saying, no, I don't like this. Yes, I like this. No, I don't want to do that. Yes, that's fine. Like really being in charge of my own experience and understanding that like it was my birth, not anyone else's. And so I wasn't there to appease anyone. I was there to like have my baby. And by putting that first, I was able to speak up for myself and tell people when I was uncomfortable and really get the optimal birth experience. And so that is what I would recommend more than anything else, like practice saying no, practice using your voice before you go in to your birth experience so that when you are uncomfortable, you can feel empowered to speak up for yourself and also talk to your partner about this stuff and say like, hey, I might need help sometimes like speaking up for myself about this. Will you have my back? Will you be there to stand by me if I'm uncomfortable with a doctor or nurse and make sure you have people who are on the same page as you because honestly, you're going to be in so much pain. It's going to be hard to speak at times. So you want people who can speak on your behalf. And I think that's also why it's important to have a birth plan so that if it comes down, the fact that you're not able to speak up for yourself, you have a document that can at least partially speak for you. Don't be afraid to speak up and ask for what you need. If I can say anything about my birth experience, it would be that. It was a much different experience than I expected. Even though I did the castor oil thing, I still had to be induced. So I had to have the Pitocin and the like cervix thinning stuff. And during that process, I was in so much pain that I went through morphine, fentanyl, nitrous oxide, and then finally the epidural. Yeah, that shit is no joke. I think there's such a strict mentality around natural birth, and I think it's perpetuated by social media, making people think that like only women who have natural births are like strong mothers, and that's just some fucking bullshit. Like everyone is different, every experience is different, everyone's pain tolerance is different. I kind of bought into that like really strict natural birth thing at first but once i actually experienced birth i was like oh this is why people have epidurals because it hurts like fucking shit and the epidural is like a magic miracle that like makes the pain somewhat bearable so that someone like me can actually relax enough to have my baby. We're all different with what might be positive for us. Hospital births may be positive to some, where home births may be positive to someone else. And then some of us could be open to whatever. I'm gonna quickly react to Leaf's birth. I want you to know that this is entirely from my perspective and this is not Leaf's point of view. This is my opinion and my perspective. Yeah, I think last night I was like already starting to go into labor a little. I was having all these weird cramps and the lightning feeling. It's nice to lay down for a bit. Yeah. And then you just like change positions. Changing positions while laboring, especially in active labor, can be very beneficial. It can help with different comfort measures and maybe even put your baby in a good position depending on what position you get into. Leaf is smiling in a lot of her pictures between contractions and it just made me like light up. Leaf also seems to know proper positions and how to breathe while in labor. Leaf also seems very comfortable and focused no matter where she is, whether she's at home on her bed with her dog or in the hospital with a nurse by her side. Leaf is supported all over. She has support from her partner, she has support from her friend taking photos, she has support from her dog when she's at home, and the medical staff seem very supportive where she gave birth. Yes. That's it. 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 She's coming. She's coming! Yep, she comes. Here she comes. Here you go. Come on, Leaf. You can do it. Come on, Leaf. Open your eyes. Yes, watch. yes. Push, 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 push. Deep breath, deep breath in. Do it again. Push, 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 push. push, push. She's there. She's coming. Oh, baby, you got it. Yep. Do it again. Oh, you're doing so good. Yeah, don't bear down. Right there. there yes. Yeah, don't bear down. Right there. there. Yes. Push, 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 push. There's the baby. Oh yeah, you did it. Okay. Baby, you did it. There's a new goal times two. Oh, baby.
There's a little cord. I think it was wrapped twice. In her birth video, you can hear everyone cheering her on, and that's how it should be. For those of you watching about to give birth, in what ways could you prepare? Thank you for watching, subscribe if you'd like, and I'll see you next time.